over the past couple of uh, weeks or so, throughout this patch, even the patch cycle, uh, with, with patch 9.2, there's been a, there was a lot that Blizzard was responding to with regards to shit people want. I want, uh, I want tier Blizz, and they're like, okay, cool, it's coming. You know, we knew that it was coming. It was just a matter of when, and that's kind of a that's kind of an important uh, little topic to talk about too. It's like when we know something is coming, but we don't know exactly when. We get pissed. And and I say we as a very broad overgeneralization. Um, it's not everyone, but I just say we anyway. OK, just bear with me there. But and also when we know something is coming and we know when it's coming. And we know what to do to prepare for it. Which which also includes just waiting and just doing nothing. We get pissed again. Because we want it now, for the most part. We want things sooner. We want to be able to work towards that now. We don't want to wait. Man, Blizz, how dare you play Puppet Master uh, to, to what we want and all that stuff. And I'm also, but, but I'm also thinking of like how, uh, you know, and you usually hear this from people who are like, we want tier or whatever. I guess more, more presently, we want... Uh, the creation catalyst to be available now. We we don't want to have to wait once the creation catalyst is available. We want to be able to just convert all of our gear with the flux that we've been massing up because and we've been massing up a lot over the past couple of like weeks or so. We want to be able to spend it all right away. F the time, you know, fuck the time gating, fuck the waiting. Uh, we want to get into all that now. But at the same time, and here's where I'm getting to this whole, why is this discourse not united? Uh, at the same time, there's another conversation, sometimes coming from the same people. Oh, the casuals, the solo players, they don't need tier. They don't need that stuff. Why, why, why should they get that stuff? For just like outdoor content, they don't need that stuff. No, forget it. Forget them. We're the important ones. And so what I want the takeaway to be, as I word salad for the next however many minutes, and I'll probably distract myself immediately, maybe we'll come back, we'll, we'll circle back to this or something, is that if we want something, it's got to be for, like, everybody. I don't think that's fair for... People who raid PvP do Mythic Plus to make themselves feel like they're the ones who are appropriately playing the game and should get these things and have the right to ask for the, these things faster because it will improve their quality of life, but at the same time push other people down. I don't think that's okay. You know, we're seeing stuff that Blizzard's doing. Uh, we we have yet to see a, a 9.2.5 PTR build. And each build that comes in, I'm going to be looking and I'm going to be checking. Hey, does the creation catalyst still work the way that it looks like it's working? And I'm going to be checking this checking on this until the creation catalyst is available, because I've been I've been saying this multiple times. Uh, I've been I've been testing it out and looking and I'm saying, OK, cool. If I buy sand worn gear. I can plug that into the creation catalyst and create tier. So in a couple of weeks, uh, two weeks, 31st, a little bit more than two weeks in two more resets, whatever. Potentially, we'll get like one charge of the creation catalyst. That's going to let anybody who only has one piece of tier to get their two piece. It's going to allow anyone with three pieces of tier to get their four piece. It's going to allow uh, people who want a little bit more agency on how they want to reslot their gear. They'll have a little bit of that ag agency. And it'll also let those who don't do any group content at all. Zero. Not even queuing up for Raid Finder or Dungeons or those events or any of that stuff. It'll allow them to get that first piece. 
And then after X amount of time, I think people have said, maybe Blizzard had said that it's going to be one charge per week. Uh, after, you know, on the following week, solo players will be able to get their first two piece. Ever. There are some people who've, who have been playing World of Warcraft, not doing uh, group content, and they're extremely limited in what they can do. And for the past 17 years, folks have been like, that's okay. They don't need any of that stuff. Now, to be fair, things like tier and high-end trinkets and things like that, they are created and, and rebalanced around end game content. But what solo folks have gotten is was has not been a compromise. They just don't get it. And that kind of sucks. Doesn't it? You know, those those folks out there who are like, hey, I, I'm going to roll all these characters and things like that. You know, that's great and all. But, you know, part of part of the reason why I'm this is me guessing. All right. I'm just guessing player behavior. here. Part of the reason why they'll they'll, you know, just go ahead and start all over again and, and make another character. A part of the reason behind that is because, well, once they get them up, they know there ain't much to do beyond that. They're just interested in that journey because at least that journey felt like something. The journey that they that they experience at max level, extremely limited. Yeah, I'll do some dailies. Okay, that's cool. Get that rep up. Okay, that's a thing. But that's it. There there isn't enough for them to 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 stretch out. And WoW tries because they have outdoor world content. There is an opportunity for solo players uh, who don't who just. You know, don't do any of that stuff to flex a little bit. Hey, there's some elite mobs that before I couldn't handle, but now I can. And they can create for themselves this bit of a journey of how they were able to uh, obtain strength. And throughout what I say, throughout what I call modern WoW, which started with Legion and so, and so far has extended into Shadowlands, you know, we've seen... Um, We've seen stretches that have allowed solo players to get more access to just straight power so they can flex even more. And world content has also evolved a little bit, too. We, now we have, you know, it started with like a couple of dailies here and there. Now we have world quests. So that way, uh, solo folks ha constantly have, OK, not constantly, but regularly have more things to do. Not exactly challenging, but it's there. But folks that raid dungeon PvP and all that stuff, you know, they, they look at it from a slightly different angle. They see it as the stepping stone in order to get to the things that they actually want to do. And so there's been a lot of appropriate discourse over, hey, we're tired of like grinding this and this and this. Uh, and, and so uh, there's, you know, so, so folks have made their arguments with not very much regard for people that play by themselves, for people that just log on for a couple of hours a week, or people who log on for many, many more hours a week than people who play the big three, raids, dungeons, and PvP, but they just don't do any of that stuff. They do other things. They just, they toil away. They grind for, they, they fucking gold farm. They uh, do resources. They do professions. They just make characters a bunch of times. Uh, but I feel like they're, but it, it continuously feels like they're invisible and that sucks. Um, you know, the, the raid logger feels like their time is more valuable than someone else's given, you know, because, because they play the good part of the game, supposedly. Uh, Titan Fortune did do weird things. It gave some crazy access to solo and casual folk. It's like, wow, shit, I'm just going to keep farming these quests for, for gear because who knows? I might, I might luck the fuck out. Uh, I fondly remember, I think it's in my void storage. I don't know, but I have a, you know, I, I have a blue quest. I, a, a blue world quest reward that I got Spearfisher's band. I remember the name. It's memorable because that had a, that had a Twilight Devastation on it, like a rank three thing. 
and that felt hella good. And I got it from a world quest, and I used that all the way towards the end of Battle for Azeroth, and it was fantastic! I enjoyed it. So... Uh, but, but you also had folks that were part of the big three, you know, they, they were, again, they were appropriately expressing their discourse. Hey, dude, you know, this this whole luck thing really, well, it really sucks. It create it, it creates this perpetual farm um, that is very unpredictable, and that's not fair. So I get that. I, I do get that because I, I raid and sometimes I do dungeons. And I do like a, <laughs> I do like this much PvP. I still have yet to do like anything in this current season, um, but it was but it was great for solo players, arguably, right? Not perfect, but it was great for solo players because they had a little bit more of that access. Um, on the other on the on the other side of things, things like Azerite essences, they're things that everyone complained about with Azerite essences because it, you know. Being able to get the thing that you want, okay, the getting the rank one thing, okay, not so bad in most cases. Getting a rank three, it's a bit that's considerably tougher because of the things that you had to do. You had to, you know, players were regularly challenged to go outside their box, to go outside of their comfort zone. But a lot of the a lot of players that who were involved in that they were also like you know they, they also turn around and say well if the casuals want to get gear then they're just gonna have to group they're just gonna have to step it up but wow i don't want to have to pvp because i just raid and because i just raid i just do dungeons i don't want to feel like i have to raid in order to get like the good ass trinkets so then i can do the thing that i actually want to do in mythic plus I don't like saying the word hypocrisy because I don't mean to attack other players, but I or, or or make it feel like they're the problem or something like that. But there is this conflicting discourse that I want the things for me, but I still want to push those other folks down because I'm more important. You know, a, a, a regular thing that goes around is uh, the game doesn't respect my time. But it also reads like, you know, and I look at the discourse and I participate in it, in, it, in it often. Not only do people are like, hey, Blizzard needs to respect my time, but I don't give a fuck about other people's time. They're not important. You know. I don't want to get into the whole, like the whole, hey, my 15 bucks entitled me to blah, blah, blah. And, you know, we all pay the same thing. That, 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 that kind of goes without saying, you know, we're all customers. Of you know, we are all customers of this product. We all consume it. We just consume different things, and you know, there are folks who take certain things and they value themselves over at. The, so you know, and it goes both ways. But I do also notice that solo and casual folk, they don't exactly give themselves a voice. There's no that you know, there isn't really one who advocates for them. I don't think I'm a good advocate for them. I bring it up. I, you know, I, I bring up this sort of discourse and all that. And there seem to be people who are, are grateful for that. But I don't think I, you know, I don't think I'm the best person for it because I raid. And maybe that discredits some of my opinions on it. But I do think it's a really, I do think it's a really, really, really important to make this like a bigger part of the discussion it, it, like this discourse needs to be way more inclusive than it is right now that's the burden that blizzard gives itself because they have to kind of guess uh and, and try to empathize the best that they can because they're there they're making the shit they're trying to guess what is best for everybody uh, but we all look at myself included, we all look at World of Warcraft, we all look at games through a certain lens, and we wonder, hey, bitch, what about me? What about my class? What about my preferred play style? What about my preferred play time? And, and that sort of thing. So it's, it's, it's a constant challenge. Um, but, I, but, but what I'd like to try to do is just kind of point it out 
that we all want these things, and if we can kind of come together with a bit more of a united voice that doesn't try to push other folks down, we all might be happy. Happier, I should say. We're seeing Blizzard respond in, in, in good ways. Like I said, Creation Catalyst, it looks like it's going to be something that is, that, that, that'll work for, um, uh, that'll work for like solo and, you know, solo people who, uh, and, and et cetera. <laughs> solo people and et cetera. The way that it seems to be timed right now, the ca the creation catalyst is timed for specifically the solo person. It's going to be available as soon as the final wing of Raid Finder is made available. Um, the way that Sandborn Relics are earned, which is a big pain in the ass still, despite the buff, uh, it's going to give those sorts of opportunities for, for players to get Sandborn gear. That's cool. I think that, that there should be more done for Sandworn Relics because, again, there aren't enough going around. And we're going to see, you know, as soon as the Catalyst is open, you're going to see, hey, I want to, I want to, maybe let's say like a month after the, after the Catalyst is open. It's like, you're like hey, I want to I roll a new character. I want to I wanna finally level up some alt that I've been like sitting on for a while. Boom, let's go into like Xerath Mortis content. That's great. And they're going to have like four to five charges of the creation catalyst that they that they're going to have a it's going to take them a while to use because Sandworm gear is very slow to obtain. And that's kind of OK, kind of. It still gives the, you know, it gives that sense of progression. Uh, it gives that sense of it gives a bit of a sense of story for for those folks who just do world content. I'd almost argue, you know, some, and there are people who raid dungeon and PvP. They're going to be like, "Hey, Blizz, you guys need to give us like a sandworn boost because I want to get my alt up so I can do my things, right?" Which is which is a fair thing to ask for. That sounds reasonable, but people who participate in the big three, they also have tremendous opportunities to obtain gear from all sorts of places, theoretically. In like a, you know, in, in a month or two, a person will be able to get to max level. They'll be able to uh, jump into mythic zeros, and they'll be able to get a bunch of gear that they can um, that they can convert into like a tier set thing. It's going to take a little while because there's still because you still need cipher, uh, not cipher. Uh, you still need cosmic flux to convert this stuff. But for a new character that just jumps in, there's about like mm, two or three thousand flux that's available like pretty much within the first day. You just gotta bum around, get a couple of treasures, click a couple things, get even more treasures. It's very accessible. Um, any person uh, who hit who hits max level, who participates in like most in, in more than just zone content. They'll be able to get two piece that day, pretty much. And that's amazing. That's great. That's it makes it super accessible. I love that. Uh, it lets it lets a person get started if they're dedicating themselves to that. A solo person isn't going to get it that fast. But mark my words, we're going to hear folks talk about we want Sandworn Relic boosts and Blizzard's going to give in, probably. Uh, but people are going to, you know, call for that and not really care about what solo folks think. Uh, overall, people are going to react well once word really gets out that, hey, this is your path to get this um, to get this gear. And even solo players will be pissed about it, too, because they'll be like, oh, so you changed your tone on it. Blizz, by informing us of this. Uh, you know, and, and it made me not care about farming Sandborn Relics, and now I should care about Sandborn Relics. Ugh. So we're going to see a boost of some sort. That's my, you know, prediction. But I think going forward, like, we're going to have to feel, like, a bit more united when we're asking for uh, for these things. What's going to be, you know, how, how are these things going to affect... Um, people who play solo and should we 
consider them more when we're trying to add cool things. I do think Shadowlands has done a lot to, uh, to cater towards uh, solo and casual folk. At the start, you know, but, but, but it's been inconsistent. It hasn't been perfect at all. You know, introducing the Covenant Sanctums in 9.0 was an incredibly good move, in my opinion. Despite the, hey, Blizz, it's taking us forever to farm for this stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you, couldn't finish, you couldn't finish farming everything within a single season. Oh, no, woe is me. Okay, fine. Sure, go ahead and complain about that. Uh, but for folks who just kind of like do their own thing and, and you know, for them, that's been their end game for for a, for a lot of folks like end game started right away because because it's just the Covenant Sanctum. That's it because they don't raid. They don't do dungeons. They don't do PvP. Their sand worn gear, not sand worn gear, their Covenant sets maxed out within like a week of just regular farming of, of anima and, and, and other stuff. And, you know, that really sucked. Um, for some folks, Endgame is Corthia, not because they needed to farm and get all the um, get all the conduit upgrades and the socket upgrades. That was still secondary. They were just like, hey, I want to be able to upgrade all my gear to 233 because this is it. <laughs> this is all I this is all I get to work. Uh, you know, this is the most I'll get to uh, to work for. Um, or maybe Raid Finder at most, something like that. I got into a brief, very brief exchange with a WoW developer who, you know, because I was saying, hey, Creation Catalyst, man, you got to let, you got to give solo folks some sort of access. We got to a very brief exchange. It was, it's public. You can find it somewhere. And they were just asking, so why do you, you know, he, he, he was at trying to ask very fairly. He's like, so, you know, tell me your feelings on, on why solo folks should get access to the create to using the creation catalyst at all knowing that there are uh event that there are weekly event quests like time walk in uh the myth the mythic zero dungeon event thing the dungeon event and raid finder um you know why you know why is the catalyst important for those kinds of folks despite that and i hope i remember this right because i'm quoting myself paraphrasing myself I said something like, some people don't do that. Some people don't do that either because of their preferences, because for them, people, you know, uh, some people have like, like crazy anxiety problems and just don't want to deal with people beyond them being like, hey, I don't mind being around people, but having direct interactions and with them, um, that, that may, doesn't make them feel comfortable and it should be just more accessible because... Ultimately, it doesn't harm anyone really. Be and and I tried to make the art, you know, and and uh, and throughout that whole thing, I, I was trying to make the argument that just because tier can be accessible for solo casual folks, it doesn't instantly mean, you know, as a as a big three player raid dungeon PvP person. It doesn't mean, oh man, I'm gonna have to grind world content in order to like get that sand worn gear or whatever, and so I can get my and so I can get my piece because that's my best in slot. It's not best in slot. I was trying to argue here. It's like not a lot of folks are going to take much value into item level 246 tier. Now, for the sake of getting a piece. Oh yeah, definitely. They're you know it, it, it's in their interest to try to get a four piece as soon as possible because that gives them like the greatest game. But you're also you know the, the the player behavior at that point is hey I'm just trying to catch up. I'm trying to reach for anything that I can, and anyone who has that sort of mindset is probably going to come to the conclusion that oh well I could do the sand worn path. But I have so many other opportunities here for me. I got the Great Vaults. I got the Raid Finder stuff. Again, I can just do Mythic Zeros until I can get all the pieces that I want and then just sit on those and then upgrade them. I believe, I, I don't know if this is true, but I've heard like two or three folks say, hey, if I get Keystone Master, my alt can do all the upgrades. I might be wrong on that, right? So... 
Um, but the thing is, but the, but the whole point that I was making is folks who are part of the big three just have more access, period. And solo folks don't. Um, and these days, we've, we're entering an era where people feel, I don't like this word, but people feel more entitled to getting like the cool stuff. It doesn't have to be the best version of that stuff. You know, I'm not trying to advocate for, hey, you know, solo casual folks, they need to get like triple mythic shit and, you know, get the get to the same item level as uh, as other folks. I do believe that there's a discussion that can take place. And, and, and even I would argue they don't need it to be that good because, you know, because uh, n not because they don't deserve it but because it would cause a lot of toe stepping. And what I, you know, and, and I would and I would argue, I don't believe that people should be forced to like go so far into, uh, that they should go so far outside their comfort zone to get the things that they want. It's, it's the whole as right essence argument that I was talking about earlier. You shouldn't have to go far, that far outside. If we find out that there is a relatively easy path for, you know, by grinding world content to get like best in slot or something like that, you're going to find that Raiders, Dungeons, PvPers, you know, it's like, oh, it's, it's going to be kind of the same thing. I have to do these things. And we, and we were seeing that. Uh, tons of discourse over the whole, oh, we have to get to Revered in order to craft the legendary in the slot that we want. We don't like doing that, Blizz. That's not okay. That's, you know, we shouldn't have to put in that, you know, that sort of work in content that we don't care about. But casuals shouldn't get tier because blah, blah, blah. You know, it, 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 again, it's like a very conflicting, uh, it's a very conflicting dance that Blizzard has to deal with. So that's my rant so far. Thank you.